Hi gang! I'm going to show you how to design a coil for a specific inductance. I often get asked questions about what types of coils can be used for crystal radios. Can I wrap it around a small electrical tube? Can I use a ferrite core? How many turns will I need? And so on. The answers all have to do with what you need to do to get the desired inductance. And that's often the case with other circuits too. Let me give you an example of where you know the inductance that you're after. In the crystal radio that I show how to make in my videos, you have a coil and a capacitor connected in parallel. Together they tune the radio in to the frequency of the radio station you want to listen to. 1200 kilohertz, for example. The formula for getting that frequency is this. And in the formula you can see there's an L and a C. The L stands for the inductance of the coil. And a C stands for the capacitance of the capacitor. I've already covered making capacitors for specific capacitance or range of capacitances in this other How to Make Capacitors video. To find it, you can use the link in the video description or click on this annotation or card. And keep in mind that I'm using the crystal radio in this formula just as an example. The same applies for many other circuits where you know the inductance you're after. How do you calculate the inductance? Here's a coil. And here's the formula for the inductance for this type of coil. There are also other shapes of coils that will have other formulas. The result of the formula is the inductance. The unit for inductance is called the Henry, often written these ways. Lowercase mh is millihenry or a thousandth of a henry. Capital mh or uh is microhenry or millionths of a henry. And nh is nanohenry or billionths of a henry. So you can see a nanohenry is quite small. For the coil in my crystal radio, if the wiper blade is all the way to the right, in other words we're using the full coil, then the inductance is 369 microhenries. But the secondary coil for this small Tesla coil is 3.1 millihenries. Let's start with the simpler variables. This is the number of turns squared, i.e. the number of turns multiplied by itself. This is the cross-sectional area of the coil. To calculate the area, find out the radius and use this formula. It's the radius squared, i.e. the radius multiplied by itself, and then multiplied by pi, which is 3.14. And this is the length. Both the area and length are in meters, not inches. This Greek letter mu and the r is called the relative permeability, though we often just say permeability, even though that's not strictly right. It's the permeability of the core. The core is whatever the coil is wrapped on. In the case of my crystal radio's coil and my Tesla coil's secondary coil, they're both wrapped on a cardboard tube, which is pretty much the same as air. So we say that they have an air core. The relative permeability of air is this, which is close enough to 1 to say that it's just 1. For the permeability of solid iron, we often just use 100. However, there are many alloys and purities, so that's just a rough number. The permeability of ferrite is equally difficult to find, since there are many different types and their values range from the tens to the thousands. Note that plastic cores, like PVC tubes or electrical conduit, also count as air, and so use a relative permeability of 1 for those two. This last number is just a constant, so just use that. Without the scientific notation, it's this. Before doing an example, let me point out that I've provided an inductance calculator on my web page. You put in the various values and click on the Calculate button and it gives you the inductance. You can find the link to it in the video description or via this annotation or card. Let's do an example using the formula. Here are the values for my crystal radio's coil. If the wiper blade is all the way to the right, then we're using the full coil. It's an air core, so the relative permeability is 1. It has 90 turns. The radius is 0.022 meters. And using the formula for the area which I showed you earlier, that's an area of 0.00152 square meters. The length is 0.042 meters. Calculating it out, we get 369 microhenries. Here's the same thing in my online calculator on my website. Except that the calculator conveniently allows us to also enter centimeters, millimeters, or inches, and converts to meters internally. You can also just give the radius or diameter, and it'll figure out the area for you. What if the inductance you calculate is lower than you want? In that case, increase the number of turns, or the area. Switching to a higher relative permeability material will also increase the inductance. So replacing an air core with its permeability of 1, with an iron core with its permeability of 100, will give a higher inductance. If, on the other hand, you calculate an inductance that's higher than you want, then just do the opposite. Decrease the number of turns, the area, or switch to a lower permeability material. And that's how you design a coil for a specific inductance. There are other factors, too, that may affect your design, such as the coil's capacitance, but that involves different formulas. It would affect the number of turns and length, though, 
So when designing for a specific capacitance, you will affect the inductance too. Also, the frequency you're using will affect your choice of core. High frequencies, like the hundreds of kilohertz resonant frequencies of Tesla coils, aren't very efficient with high permeabilities. That's one reason Tesla coils use air core coils. But for a lower frequency simple step up or step down transformer, you want a solid core. Also, in step up or step down transformers, you want a solid core so that the magnetic field efficiently couples with the secondary coil. But with something like a Tesla coil, you want air cores so that the coupling between the primary and secondary is less. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel for more interesting videos like this. If you want to help support these videos, then you can through my Patreon page. Or you can go to my website and donate any amount you want. And if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up, share with your social media, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon!